Bees here in Chicago, open air for Blackcraft, create your own future with Nurgle from Behemoth. How you doing, man? Not bad. Pretty good. Okay, good. Glad to Getting here, ready. Right? So I wanted to ask, because this is like the very, very end of the Satanist cycle. How's it been uh, spending part of this year doing uh, Me and That Man? And how has that vibe, like doing something more subtly dark, how has that affected what you've come back to? It's all about just leveling out my energies and just, you know, balancing it. And uh, it worked out great for uh, the creative uh, process for the next Behemoth album, because when I came back from the Me and the Man uh, camp, uh, I just, you know, I was literally bursting out with ideas and every second day or just have another song ready. So I don't want to reveal too much of the details uh, for the next album, but we got a shitload of stuff written and uh, I've never been that creative in years. So it, I think it was like both entities, they're really like, they're very complementary to each other, you know, and they just, you know, nicely balance out the energies that, that I deal with. So. Was it a different use of dynamics, and is that, yes. was, that, was that one of the main things yeah, that you was, took back yeah, to the creative? Yeah, yeah. I was kind of craving for something that's going to be very stripped down, uh, more mellow. Not Behemoth is like high voltage, you know, high adrenaline, super intense uh, approach to everything, pretty much. You know, it's very aggressive, very expansive, very conquering. Um, it's, it's a powerhouse. Well, me and that man is pretty much the opposite, you know, it's more like laid back, yeah. back to the roots, you know, I mean, like both bands come from the same source, which is blues, you know, I mean, like, you know, maybe people don't realize the fact that all metal is based on, it's all rock music is based on blues, but me and that man just goes like, uh, uh, to the source of like all rock genres, basically, so, but I love it, you know, it's like, I just loved the, the whole trip of it. It was amazing. I mean, it, it's a side, side project and uh, that I'm probably gonna keep up and just come back eventually with the next record in a couple of years, wherever, whenever I feel that, that it's the right time for that. But uh, from now on, uh, once we're done, we're wrapping up the Satanist cycle. We are getting ready with the Messer Noir Life Satanist uh, DVD and the live album, which is gonna be massive. Uh, we're gonna have another video, like professional video film for the Satanist. Oh wow! Yeah, it's gonna be the sixth one. It's also gonna be on a DVD. So there's the shitload of stuff coming from Behemoth, and simultaneously at the same time we're working on the on the new album that we should start recording by the end of the year. So, oh wow! Super busy. Yeah. So like, does it speak volumes about? The quality of the Satanist, the fact that you are on a sixth video, that the last tour for it is you being in arenas with Slayer. Does it speak volumes about about the quality of that record? And that it's been a couple of years now and people are still clamouring for it. I think uh, like my plan for the Satanist was was to keep its life as long as we can and just keep it alive and just uh, so people can feed on it for not just one or two or three tours. I really wanted to extend the touring cycle. I really wanted to do what bands used to do in 90s, like, you know, Metallica or ACDC or whoever, like big bands, you know, when they release a record, they just hardly ever stop touring for that, you know, because they had that comfort. For most of extreme metal bands, they just bang, bang, bang. They need to produce records, fabricate records in most cases, just to stay alive because they need to pay their bills. The massive comfort of where we are now as a band is that we don't need to do another record because we can afford not doing another record. So the plan is to make a record that's going to be significant to the, to the genre and the record that people will remember 20 or 30 or 50 years down the road. I know it may sound arrogant of me saying that, but I, me as a fun boy, I truly believe as much as I worship uh, uh, Reagan Blood or Back in Black or just you name it, the classics, you know, they're timeless. And I really want to make all the effort and I just want to do everything that is humanly possible to make our albums 
uh, a monument, not just another product in the market that we need to sell by doing three or five tours, get some cash, pay the bills and run to the studio again because there's bills coming, yeah. you know, and, and there's contracts saying, oh no, you got to deliver the master. Fuck that. We, we create our own um, history and we dictate it basically. So there's no label, no managers, no mastermind behind Behemoth other than ourselves that plan things out. And uh, the fact that the Satanists did so successful, I think that a huge part of that is that people see that it's all real. There's 100% sincerity and honesty there. And there's no bullshit, no gimmicks, no pretending. It's all us and our heart and our passion and our love on that album. And you can't fucking fake it. It's there. And so, is the, is the ambition to push the boundaries further as well because yes. I mean it was like the, the thing that hit me when the Satanist first arrived was just how grand it was like I, I mean Behemoth Records regularly grand but even by your own standards is that just a is, is, it, is it about pushing those boundaries further always yes I mean you gotta do it but I I don't really see Behemoth trying to race with itself you know okay. it's I just wondered because of the because of the extreme reaction, it's almost like the bar was set so high with the Satanist. But but the thing is not really jump over that bar now. It's just to set it somewhere else, you right. know, yeah. in a different spot. It's like it's like imagine like 8,000 meters uh, peaks because there's no 9,000 meters. Like you got like a few that are like the tops of the world, right? So imagine this few. 8,000 meters tops. We we climbed one of them, and there's few more left. So we not we won't be just trying to find another way to go the same way. We're gonna climb another one. We did Mount Everest. With the next album, we're gonna do a K2, I love that. and so on and so on. But it's whole new, different approach. It's a different mountain. It's a different challenge. So I don't want to go back there because I've already been there. I've already conquered that mountain. But there's few more to conquer, so let's just, you know, the challenge begin and uh, let's fight for it, that's it. How far into the writing process are you? Are you nearing completion? Uh, like even, I mean, we got, we got 10 or 12 songs nailed pretty much. Right. And there's a lot of stuff written and I'm going through lyrics now. And actually, first time ever in our history, in our career, we are working on tour. So wow. we got this mobile studio, and we just fuck around with ideas, with the songs, we go through leads, we practice, we revisit like all demos, so we uh, try to perfect it and just make it as supreme as we can. Does that add any kind of intensity? Like, the, like, do, like, firstly, this far into your career, challenging yourselves by doing things that you haven't done before. Yes. But also, like, in the middle of a tour like this. Yeah, uh, but but you know what? It's the, it's cool, you know, because uh, the way the reason why we never did that was that there was no. I mean, uh, it, it never came from here. Right. And now I have a pleasure to just do like midday. We just sit together. There's no stress, no tension. We just, hey guys, you know, how about these ideas? You know, let's try the, to play it that way. Let's let's record it. Let's go back to it tomorrow and see if you're right. Maybe you're wrong. Right. You know what I mean? Just play with the formula instead of yeah, just fucking just just make this trip joyful, all the ways possible. And so uh, we've been ending these interviews the same every single time. And of course, you're more than familiar with Black Craft. Uh, when we put the, uh, the term create your own future forward, what, what comes to mind for you and what advice would you give to people to create their own future? Well, that's going to sound a little bit paradox because you're asking me about the future and I'd say just create your own uh, uh, present day. Just focus on here and now because that's the only sure thing and if you focus on here and now, you're literally creating what's coming next. If you know what I'm trying to say. It's all about the approach at the very source, at the very beginning of, of, your, uh, of, the, 
of the thinking process and of projecting what's coming next because we obviously I mean I want to draw splendid things you know I want to draw things that are inspiring and empowering but I start with the present moment focusing on here and now focusing on the fact that I'm talking to you now yes. and I'm aware of that situation and I'm trying to give my best interview ever because maybe there's n nothing more after this you know what I'm trying to say well I'm, ha I'm happy with that as well so uh, good to meet you Bert Nurgle Likewise. Bees at Chicago Open Air for Blackcraft create your own future with Nurgle from Behemoth